A debate over how the government manages its budget is taking over Capitol Hill. The key word is reconciliation. Reconciliation. I'm willing to go to reconciliation. Budget reconciliation is a process that speeds up lawmaking. That may come in handy for Washington's majority party this summer. While a bipartisan group reached an agreement to spend more than $1 trillion on infrastructure in June. This is roads and bridges, but also lots of other kinds of infrastructure. Democrats also want to pass the American Families Plan to shore up the country's social safety net. Republicans and this group did not want to go along with any of my family plan issues, the child care tax credits, the human infrastructure that I talk about. In total, the president wants to spend $6 trillion in fiscal year 2022. In order to get anywhere close to that level of spending, Democrats will need to use budget reconciliation. But there's no guarantee that this will work. Divisions within the party could scuttle the entire process. Here's how budget reconciliation works and why Democrats are using it to pass Biden's agenda. Every fiscal year, Congress has an opportunity to pass a new budget bill. This is an opening to pass laws with a simple majority, without needing 60 votes to overcome a filibuster. Let's be clear, the purpose of this in many ways, from a partisan perspective, is um, to get around the 60-vote hurdle on regular legislation. Bill Hoagland has worked on congressional budgets for more than three decades. There had been something like about 22 reconciliation bills enacted into law, and I was involved in um, about 18 of those. Here's how the reconciliation process works. When a party controls the House, Senate, and White House, it can write the government's budget. The first draft of the budget is called a budget resolution. This document can include reconciliation instructions for one or more committees to change existing rules on spending, revenue, or debt. These instructions allow the controlling party to fold its goals into the budget instead of passing them as regular laws that are subject to filibusters. Once a budget resolution passes, the next step is committee review, where members of Congress write policies that deliver what the reconciliation instructions ask for. For example, the Transportation Committee may receive instructions that affect road building programs. These instructions can ask the committee to change how much is spent, how much tax is collected, or how much debt the country takes on for this program. But new policies sometimes depend on rules and regulations that don't directly affect the budget and might not pass in reconciliation. It's not out of the realm of possibility that you couldn't create new spending or new taxes or new uh, 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 provisions, but it, but it has to have a direct fiscal impact. Once the recommendations are finalized, they're sent to the Senate Budget Committee. This group verifies that the revised plan changes the budget in a way that follows the rules of Congress. After passing committee review, the budget is sent to the Senate chamber for final consideration on the floor. A budget reconciliation bill carries special privileges, which can speed up its passage. For starters, there's a 20-hour time limit to review the proposed changes. In the normal lawmaking process, Debate is what makes Capitol Hill stall out, often in the form of a filibuster. A reconciliation bill avoids the filibuster and can pass with a simple majority. In the event of a tie, which is possible in today's split Senate, the vice president steps in to cast a tie-breaking vote. If the vote passes both chambers of Congress, the reconciliation bill then heads to the president's desk, where it can be signed into law. Making rules in this manner comes with caveats, for instance, reconciliation measures are supposed to focus on the budget impacts and little else. This is one of several restrictions put in place by the Senate's Byrd rule. The biggest one is a provision says, does the provision in reconciliation, is it merely incidental to an overall policy? If it doesn't pass that test, then any United States senator can stand up and say, Mr. President, that provision XYZ violates the bird rule. I raise a budget act point of order, and it is, and unless there's 60 votes to waive that point of order, that particular provision is surgically removed. Doesn't kill the bill, just simply takes it out. Early in 2021, the Senate parliamentarian's interpretation of the bird rule forced Democrats to abandon a piece of the COVID-19 bill. Uh, this reconciliation bill does not include an increase in the minimum wage to $15 an hour. In my view, it should have. Democrats are on a tight timeline to pass laws that affect many areas, including infrastructure, climate change, taxes, paid sick leave, 
unemployment payments, child care, and education programs. It's a lot to get done before the 2022 campaign cycle kicks off. When we get into next year, uh, uh, fiscal year 20, uh, budget resolution 23, then it becomes so much more partisan that it may be more, even more difficult to achieve uh, uh, agreements. In order to use budget reconciliation in an evenly split Senate, Democrats need everyone in the party to fall in line. That puts all eyes on moderate Democrats like Joe Manchin, who could vote no on a reconciliation bill and prevent any laws from passing. If they think in reconciliation, I'm going to throw caution to the wind and go to five or six trillion dollars when we can only afford one or one and a half or maybe two and what we can pay for, then I can't be there. With the spending figures piling up and time running out, this year's budget talks are shaping up to be a particularly high-stakes negotiation.